has your life changed? It seems like Planet of the Apes kind of expanded audiences to you. I mean, yes. you've been working forever. Yes, I've been working a long time, but yes, Planet of the Apes. Bizarrely enough, because you can't see me I know. at all. <laughs> Uh, but Planet of the Apes, yeah, really opened up uh, a great deal of, of work, which is just what I'm here to do. You know? Well, I think it also, it's because the performance stood out with Thank all of you. that. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. That's very kind to say. Yeah, I mean, look, working alongside Andy, Andy's in it every time. It's like doing theatre with Andy. I mean, first of all, for the closeness of the family, for the, I mean, we're all in grey pyjamas, so the actors turn up and they're getting their hair done and their makeup. And we're just in grey PJs and no one checks on us. So was, that was a fantastic feeling from what you're used to as being an actor on set. You know, you get faffed over and fussed over and then you go and do your scene, you know. But as the apes, we could just stay, you know, and we could sit and, and play, and, you know, have the whole thing going on all the time. And it was, uh, it was enriching, bizarrely enough, it was an enriching experience. And of course, Cobra gets so dark with how he comes, you know, so you have to you have to pull that out of yourself and go all right let me make it authentic because the other deal is like doing a, a, a basic lame magic trick to an adult they're like uh -uh, i know what that is mate same with the motion capture if you slightly stand up human or look human it it sells sells out as we called it which is you totally don't look like an ape so yeah. the model's very difficult and of course the artists are fantastic, so we're working alongside with those guys. They've got to be inspired by what they're watching day after day after day. So you're working very hard to keep something inspiring that draws out your character, that they can then make the ape model, the skin that they attach to the dots, move in that same manner. So you're very conscious of how the mouth is are leaving it hanging and playing 99% of everything through your eyes and to do that against Andy who's a wonderful actor but at the same time was Caesar the whole time we were rolling was was yeah was enriching how does that prepare you for Fantastic Four and being a part of that and being taking on a, a yeah. very iconic role? yes taking on a very oh, scary man. role yeah very yeah. scary I mean look the the fan base is enormous I'm a fan I have three older brothers. I also have a wonderful little sister, but I have three older brothers who are fans, and they lynch me. You know, if I don't get it right, I'm dead. I can't go home at Christmas. That's me done. So the phone calls were like, Tobe, what's, uh, what's the voice? I'm, like, I'm, I'm filming, man. What if you can't? I'm trying to figure it out. Let me. You've got to get that right, you know? I know, bro, I know. I have to get the voice right. I know. So. I had my own family's pressures. They loved me, don't get me wrong, yeah. they weren't. But uh, to live up to that already, because I was always getting the comics with seven pages missing, because you know the old comics with staples, mm -hmm. pulled one out the back and one out the front came out as well. Yeah. So I was getting very limited comic books, hand-me-down, kind of dog-eared, yeah, coffee-stained, <laughs> ruined comic books. So I was like, is that the thing? And they were like, no, that's not in there. I'm like, well, I don't have that annual, you know. So I have a fantastic resource to go from. And then Simon Kinberg's an enormous fan, written a fantastic script. Not using the same, it's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. No, he'd written a fantastic, he had written a fantastic <laughs> script. Josh is a massive fan. Great details. Any questions you had, he had the answers. And so I had this vast resource to, to play off, to play from. And so the, weirdly enough, it's the most pressure I've ever had going into Doom. Just I, I put it on myself, but I was like, geez, I've got to get this just right. I've got to angle him just right. And so once I knew what I had to achieve, uh, the costumes were so fantastic, like it was a joy, it was a real pleasure to play, you know. Once you step into that world, once you step into the costume, how quickly does it come to you? How quick? Because obviously you've done the most capture. Yeah. How quickly does that world of Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom and all that? Well, you know, so what's funny is the morning consists of putting on the undersuit, putting on the cooling system, because we were in Baton Rouge and it was 10 billion degrees every day and maximum humidity. Uh, so we're putting on this under cooling suit, which is it's tight, it's not very heavy, but it's nice. Then you're putting on the next piece. I had to talk myself up to slip on this latex because it's supposed to look like my skin, my deal. And it wasn't until you heard that final clunk, clunk of, the, of the mask that I was like, okay, yeah, I got it. I couldn't hear a word, I had earbuds in. 
a fantastic sound team looking after me, playing me Sympathy for the Devil or Wind if I needed it, you know, like between shots. So I got to be so solitary, got to play around in ego, which is all Doom is. Someone's a molecule better than him, he needs to destroy. So that's what I was trying to play from. And I could see them all having fun and enjoying themselves, couldn't hear a word until their mics got turned on. But I was, I was coming over a big tannoy system, you know? So I, every time I spoke, it was like, it's this doom, I was like, because every time I spoke, people would be like, what the? So I, I just, I was given all the tools. So if, if I fail, crucify me, man, because that's just, I, I, you know, I had so many tools to help me. It was fantastic. Pretty good at playing villains. Yes. A yeah. little bit. Yeah. Doesn't seem like you're a villainy kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the point of a villain, isn't it? You yeah. play the nice guy and then you're a villain. No, I am. I am. Do you prefer the villain? Do you prefer um, playing these darker characters? You know, it's been said so many times by so many wonderful actors better than me. It, it's the most enriching role because you can crack a joke but at the same time get all of the poison out. You can be light but you don't have to be Seeing is so wonderful and beautiful. You know, you don't have to say any of those cheesy love lines. You've always got to be like, okay. You did that well, though. Thank you, dude. Yeah, by the way, you are incredibly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you get, you just, it's, I don't want to say easiest, but it's, it's the most honest somehow. I think we all feel that. That's why Doom's such an incredible villain. We all feel, we understand exactly where he's coming from. Cobra, too. I mean, I was blessed with good writing and good directors and good actors to work around. But the nice thing about that is you, once you find the heart of who they are, why they're doing, why they're operating, what, you know, criminal psychologists call their, their MO, you know, you can be all things to all men. You can do the whole gamut, every fathom it, top to bottom. And it's, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. Working with a director who's taking on this, this property. How did he work with you? And were, were there specific things that you liked about the way he he delved into these characters? Well, I I think I was a little spoiled on set because I think Josh's favorite character was was Doom. I'm talking for him. Maybe it wasn't, and he'll he'll clarify otherwise. But I was a little spoiled because he and I got on, and we would have deep dark conversations, and we would get all of what we needed to go into the energy of the scene and then at, when I'm Doom he doesn't have to talk to anybody they can everybody can be having conversations he's got a mic I've got buds in my ears and he can be like hey Tommy be like hey Josh how you doing so he can hear me through his cans and we just just have a private conversation have a little chat and then get right into you know so he didn't he didn't beg great things from me he trusted me and I trusted him so I was very spoiled with what Josh brought to it. I know the Fantastic Four, they have to be fantastic, they're our heroes. I think with Doom, we both understood what we were trying to achieve. Um, yeah, I was a little spoiled. I, I really enjoyed my time with Josh.